Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at Webpack 5. Webpack 5 is now arriving. It's very close to the official release. And it has been a long time, to be honest. Webpack 4 has been there for like forever now. So it makes sense to discuss some of the things which Webpack 5 brings. And let's get into the top things which I believe would be beneficial to you as developers. The first thing is the module federation support with Webpack 5. What module federation support is, is that it basically allows you to share the code base between two completely different projects running under Webpack. What do I mean by that? Let's say you have a single React project running on port 3000 and let's say you have another React project which is running on port 3002. Now what you want is that you want a particular piece of code, maybe it's a React component, maybe it's a function, whatever it is, to be shared between these two projects. The uh, old way would be to just copy paste both the files in, you know, in each project and then use it. But the new way, which is the federated modules, module federation, what it brings to table is that you can directly import different code that is the bundled code from a different webpack build that is the build which is already available so how does it make a difference well for the most part it will make a huge difference to people who are running micro front-end architectures micro front-end architectures is a sort of architecture where you actually create different front-end codes different front-end repositories for different features on your website for example, if you have a big company, if you have a big corporation which is working on a lot of features on front-end and you want different teams of front-end to be assigned to different tasks, you can create micro front-ends. That is a single front-end for search functionality, a single front-end for maybe a news or blog functionality, a single front-end for homepage and so on. And in most of the cases, you're going to see that in micro front-ends, you need to share the code. Next up is better tree shaking support. By that, what I mean is as an end developer, as an end user for Webpack, you're gonna have better out of the box support for lesser code, for less kilobytes of JavaScript being shipped to the production. Earlier, Webpack was not tree shaking the common JS uh, import syntax in JavaScript, that is the required base syntax. But now with Webpack 5, it supports that as well which is like a huge plus if you're using CommonJS for your projects. Number three, and my favorite out of all the features is the improved code generation with Webpack. By that, what I mean is that Webpack, before Webpack 5, you're gonna see that it would always, always emit ES5 based code. This is fine for browsers, but if you are using Webpack for, let's say, Node.js project, which runs on backend, for example, TypeScript plus Node.js, you don't really want your code to be compiled down to ES5, right? Because Node can handle ES6 code. Node 10, 12, 14, these versions can handle ES6 code and maybe ES7, 8 as well. So earlier, you had no way to actually output ES6, ES7, ES8 based code with Webpack. But now we do in Webpack 5 so that you can, you know, just just remove the chunk of code of ES6, all those polyfills and everything from your code base. Another one which is my favorite is the persistent build in Webpack 5. That is the persistent build caching. What do I mean by that is now in Webpack 5, the cache files in Webpack would be writable, would be, you would be able to write them to the file system. What is the benefit of that? Well, the obvious benefit is that you get faster build times. If you have used sites like Vercel for Next.js deployment, you're gonna immediately see huge benefits in terms of build time, in terms of, you know, just a speed on how fast your builds are deployed, because now you can use the cache, now you can use the um, things which were available from the last build. So this is a huge plus. Now, persistent caching could not be done without deterministic build cache. That is the, you know, that whole hash thing which Webpack provides you. So with Webpack 5, it is now deterministic. That means um, if you have not changed anything in the code and if you try to run Webpack again and again and again, you're gonna have similar hashes for your particular builds. 
So yeah, that's, that's one improvement as well. And finally, Webpack 5 would support only Node 10.13 and above. So if you're running anything below that, you cannot use Webpack 5, which I believe is a good thing so that, you know, you're able, Webpack is able to make use of more advanced Node features instead of just, um, just supporting the older ones. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty excited with Webpack 5, what it brings to the table. And uh, I look forward to use it, especially the module federation thing in the micro front ends because it is very cool and very exciting. So what's your best feature? What's, what's the feature which you like the most from Webpack? Have you used Webpack ever at all? Let me know in the comments below. Let's start some discussions. That's all for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one.